What's up guys? What I wanted to do in this video is actually talk with you all about lab environments and kind of go over how some of the HVAC system works within those lab environments. Now I want you to look on your screen here. Some of you guys that are new in the industry, this might be helpful to you. I'm sure that a lot of you older guys out there are very familiar with how a lot of this works. But basically what we have is a critical lab environment. We have some graphics here that represent the exhaust air from the room, the supply air into the room, and then we have a fume hood. And what each of these do, and uh, there again, guys, by a lab environment, I'm talking to about like these chemical labs and things like that. Uh, if you're on a college campus, you're going to see like in the chemistry department, you're obviously going to have lab environments there. Uh, where you have chemicals and other things that they do for experiments that, you know, like some of it can be some pretty nasty stuff. So those fumes have got to be removed from those rooms. In fact, most of your lab environments, especially your chemistry labs and things like that, they have pretty much 100% air turnover. That means all of the air that goes into that lab will come out. Okay, Every bit of the air that is uh, put in it from the supply side is then exhausted out. And another thing about that is the fact that most of your lab environments, a particular room, if you were to take a building where you have labs, offices, classrooms, and things like that, your labs will typically and deliberately, by design, run a negative pressure in those rooms. Basically, if you were to open that door in some of the labs, especially some if the system is out of balance or if it has failing components or things like that, uh, the door, you can actually hear air being sucked into that room, and that is because you do not want to have that room positive because you don't want those fumes escaping that lab. Okay, You want to pull those fumes out of that lab through the exhaust system. And there are a few things that play into that. Okay, Each one of these devices, now this is a Phoenix system that we have here. That's predominantly what we have within our system is Phoenix. Now, I do know that there are other manufacturers out there that make similar type uh, systems, uh, but we're going to be talking about Phoenix. And, and there again, guys, it's just a basic overview of how all of this works together. Each of these components work together to form the overall envelope in that particular room to control air going into and coming out of that room. For example, as we mentioned, we are exhausting air out. Inside the room, we do have a general exhaust valve. Uh, you can see here that basically this is a single valve for this particular room and it, you are going to see diffusers and things like that in various parts of the room that the air is being sucked out of the room and you're also going to see within the hoods basically the same thing. They will typically have an exhaust valve on them as well plus there will also be some sensors and things directly on the hood that are going to give you some information from that hood. Typically your hoods even though if they alarm that alarm threshold is set much lower for example if I got a flow alarm on this hood uh, that alarm threshold is always going to be set lower than what basically the safety would be to where it could be dangerous or whatever. But still, you don't want to ignore the alarms. You want to make sure that you're getting that constant air turnover within that room. And this is basically what we're doing with a combination of the hoods and the exhaust air. Okay, now with pulling air out, We've also got to be putting air in, and this is also where we're going to get into our temperature control as well. Represented it here, we have our supply valve. And with the supply valve, we have our air coming into the room. We also have our heating demand. We do have reheats on these. We have hot water reheats on these coils. And we are able to control the temperature in these labs, mainly using the supply valve. Okay, that's what's going to be heating or cooling the room depending on its needs. And you can see here where we are currently running on our set point. 
and our zone temperature. Uh, something that you need to remember on these is they will all communicate, as I mentioned earlier, all of these valves communicate together to maintain that offset, that negative offset within that lab space. Now we're going to go up here and look at some of the data that we see from this particular lab. We have an, uh, an offset set point. We have our actual offset, and we can also see the total supply into the room, the total air coming into that room, and then we are seeing our total exhaust being pulled out of that room. And that total exhaust is a combination between the hood and the exhaust valves. This is just one example, depending on the size of your lab, uh, depending on the amount of equipment that is in there, you will see a different you know different equipment for different labs as we're going to look at here in just a few moments but this is basically what it's doing we're maintaining that negative pressure in the system now we also need to remember that when we're pulling this air out your other air handler in a building like this you're basically uh, you know if you have rooms that maintain a negative pressure and then rooms that do not the air handler that serves the rooms that do not maintain negative pressure has a lot of extra work to do because one thing that you do not want to do is you do not want to pull the entire building negative because if you do you're going to have problems with humidity and other issues within your building so you need to maintain your air handlers which we're going to look a little deeper into the air handlers in just a few moments. Uh, and then guys, while I've got you here, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel, like and share these videos, and leave me a comment down below. That helps grow this channel and keep things going here. Let's jump over to another lab because I do want to show you some of what I was talking about when we're talking about multiple uh, systems and things like that. This is a lab that has multiple valves. We see here that instead of having a single supply air valve, we have two supply air valves, but we have a single exhaust valve and then we have a single hood. And basically it is doing the same function, okay? We have our air coming in and then the air that is being pulled out through the exhaust air as well as the air that's being pulled out through the hood. And let's just look at one more while we're in here. We have here, this is just a single valve. Of course, this is a supply valve. Now you can see this within certain buildings, certain lab environments and things like that. You can also see to where you have just a simple single uh, it, it canopy. We have one building, one room that there is a single canopy in there as an exhaust and then nothing else. Now this one is one that I don't have the graphic finished on yet, but what we have is a single general exhaust valve. We have two supply valves, and then we have multiple hoods. And I just don't have all of the graphics bound, all of the points and things pulled in for each of these hoods yet. So that's something that I have been working on. But as we can see, all of these do the same basic function. We have our offset for the room. Uh, you know, we have our set point, we have our offset, and then we have our total zone supply, and then the total zone exhaust. And we can see that we do have that set point being maintained by this system. It's to get those fumes out of that room, to keep them from disseminating out throughout the building, as well as to keep those in the room safe, because some of these chemicals can be pretty bad. So let's just go ahead and jump into the air handler because we need to see where we are getting our supply air and where we are getting that exhaust air, where it's going, where are we getting that negative pressure. Well, we're typically running a vacuum in the ductwork for the exhaust and of course the supply is always a positive pressure. So let's just jump over and look at our air handler. And this is one thing that I like to do as well because from this page, if I was to have an issue with this room, uh, just by looking at the data that's on one of these pages, I have a uh, just a little icon here to where I could go directly to my air handler or I can navigate to it. And I also can tell whether or not my air handler is running and what that discharge temperature is. So if I get a complaint that this room is hot, I can simply go into this room. And if it's hot, I can simply look up here and I can see if I am getting cool air being supplied to the supply valves. 
if the air handler is running if it is not i can literally and quickly answer that question right here you know if my air handler is running and my discharge temperature is high obviously that could be another issue that i would need to look into and we're also going to see how i've got the navigation set up i'm simply going to click on this and it's going to take me to the air handler that is supplying these labs and this is what i want to spend a little bit more time on as well what we have here is basically two sections okay we have this lower section here that you can see me hovering my mouse over this is the air handler it's a makeup unit basically it is a 100 percent outside air Okay, all its air, there is none of it coming back from the building that is getting recycled into this unit. This is 100% outside air. And then we are conditioning that air either with the heating, uh, you know, the hot water coil, the face button here. We also have a preheat coil on this particular unit and the chilled water coil. Okay, depending on what I need this unit to do, if I need it to heat the space, uh, for example, you know, and we do this on some of our air handlers. If I need to heat that space or whatever, I can raise that discharge temperature and then the preheat valve will open up to basically maintain or help maintain a discharge temperature. Uh, and this is a bit confusing that labeling on this is not correct and I need to go in and correct it. But what we have basically is our hot water here. We have our face bypass nappers and we do have a steam coil on this particular unit and a heat recovery coil. Uh, this is our heat recovery coil here. Uh, being shown in this graphic and what we do basically is we are taking that warmer air that is in the um, that room that's being exhausted out of the room we do have these coils here in the exhaust system that warmer air for example in that winter in the winter time you know this is our exhaust system here that warmer air that is being pulled through here and exhausted out of the building is pulled through these coils we have water running through these coils that has basically antifreeze in it to keep it from freezing uh, which there again guys you're getting that warm air coming up through here but at the same time you're going to be cycling that cold water where it's going to be getting very cold through here so you do need to maintain your chemicals your water treatment things like that this exhaust system is what is providing us with that negative pressure for the exhaust in our labs okay this is all ducted in and you can see here that i am running a negative pressure in this ductwork it's basically sucking on each of those exhaust valves and things like that to maintain that negative pressure and then discharge that air out of the building these fans these exhaust fans they are both constant volume okay they run the same speed regardless of anything else and the way that we maintain that set point in the discharge in the uh, exhaust system that negative set point is by manipulating these dampers it's basically a relief damper that when we get so far negative for example if we had a lot of folks go into the labs and all raised the hoods the sashes on those hoods at one time it might bring this pressure up slightly and then to compensate with that it's basically going to close this damper down slightly and allow a little more vacuum to be pulled through this ductwork to be exhausted out of the building well at the same time if everyone closed those hoods if the rooms got satisfied the pressure could go even further down and then it would open up to give a little bit of relief to these fans that's the basic function of this system this part of it and then of course those coils the water that is pumped through these coils is then cycled through the preheat coil on the air handler and this is just a little bit of a way to do a little bit of heating there again if it's you know 10 degrees out Outside, obviously you're not going to want 10 degree air hitting the chilled water coil okay this particular air handler uh, with it as I mentioned earlier we do have that preheat coil and then we also have that steam coil and we will run this to a preheat set point temperature and then we will take that air and press push it into the space that's the basic function of what this makeup unit does. The air that is pulled out of all of the labs is provided 
by this, at least the majority of it. Again, you got to remember, we have got to maintain that slightly negative pressure within those labs for the purpose of keeping the chemicals from disseminating throughout the building. Okay, That's what we do with this entire system. Okay. Uh, this is a, uh, you can call it complex or whatever, but that is just the basic function of the way this system works overall. Now, this is, again, just the air handler and the exhaust system is what we're seeing on this page or the makeup unit. And again, guys, this is kind of representative of how that works and how we are controlling the air into these labs, how we're keeping that space filled with air, how we are controlling the temperature in that space, while at the same time being able to exhaust those chemical fumes out. But guys, this is just a brief overview. This is just something I wanted to do to kind of give some of you guys out there that are a little new to this a little bit better understanding of how these work. Again, guys, I would appreciate it if you would like and share the video. Check out all of the links down below. Help support the channel. Go down there. Check out some of the stuff if you're needing some tools or something like that. And you can help support the channel by doing that. But guys, if you have any questions, leave those down below in the comments as well. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time.